brains are not wired for success, but I believe our hearts are. And it was like in my heart, I, I had this feeling, this tug, this pull that was like, Brooke, if anything is going to change about your circumstance, it's going to be you. You're going to have to step up and, and you're going to have to do something different. <laughs> my brain was so full of negative thoughts. And so what I literally became obsessed with is I became obsessed with listening to things that were different voices than what I was creating in my head. If you have a lot of bad thoughts happening in your head, you got to replace them with something else. Welcome to another episode of Negotiate Your Best Life. I'm Rebecca Zong, and I am so excited today because I have one of my dear, dear, dear friends, and she is also one of the most badass, passionate, heart-led, amazing people on the planet, Brooke Hemingway. I'm so excited to have you here with me today, and we are going to deliver such amazing, amazing, amazing stuff for you guys. You guys are in for such a treat today. So let me just tell everybody a little bit about you. Brooke Hemingway is a former nurse, a fitness professional, and she had no entrepreneurial experience, but she has a huge amount of entrepreneurial experience now. She is a powerhouse seven-figure leader, and she is a high-performance coach. She is a speaker. She is an event creator. Wait till we tell you about this event that she is doing and that I get to participate in. It is absolutely incredible. She is an overachiever. She is a mom of six kids. Yeah, six kids. You should see her. You wouldn't even believe she's got six kids. And she has a marketing business. She has a passion to help people, help women. She is <laughs> absolutely incredible. Excuse my coughing. Excuse my <laughs> call today. But I can't wait to dive into everything that she is going to be sharing with you today about manifesting, about negotiating your best life. Thank you, Brooke Hemingway, for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for this discussion because when I think about negotiating your best life, I really think I've truly had to negotiate everything that I have in my life and everything that I have, as is so common for people listening here, like wasn't given to me. I definitely had to fight yeah. for it, go for it and negotiate what I needed and wanted. So I'm so honored to be here. I feel the same way about you. You've inspired me and we were brought together at exactly the right time. We sat, we certainly were. And every time I think of you, I just think of good goodness in my heart because you are truly one of the best people that I know, but you are also one of the most fierce, amazing people that I know, because you, in, in, a, in a lot of ways, you're like me, because I actually kind of had to come from like behind and, you know, um, fight for everything that I have. I mean, you know, I had these three little kids and, you know, I got divorced and, you know, had nothing and went back to law school and kind of shoestring my way all the way to the top. Like, like, you know, but you also very much kind of did the same thing. You had these six kids and tell, kind of tell your story about yeah. how you were um, in Hawaii with um, your husband. Yeah. Tell that story. Yeah. So, you know, I, I wasn't a single parent, but my mom, my parents got divorced when I was a teenager. And when I think back to not only myself, but my husband, we both come from families that are broken homes. Uh, we both come from families with quite a bit of extensive mental health problems on my husband's side. Lots of his siblings and his mom are bipolar. My husband had met, or my dad had a major depressive disorder and so kind of like the homes that we came from were good homes in many ways. And, and we were loved, but there was a lot of mental health and there was a lot of struggle and a lot of challenge. And so I kind of carried that with me into adulthood. And most of my adulthood, even while having children, there was a lot of anxiety. There was honestly a lot of depression, a lot of self-worth issues and I, that's just kind of how I thought I was. I thought this is just the way that I am. I'm always going to be this way. 
And so I never in a million years, eight years ago, when I started off in entrepreneurship, would have thought that I would be speaking, that I would have communities, that I would be doing an event, that I would be inspiring other people to go after their dreams because I was very much a lonely person. And I'm just wondering if there's anyone out there listening today that struggles with loneliness and feels like they're alone or feels like there's something wrong with them or feels like they're broken. I used to say to myself all the time, like, what's wrong with you? You know, why can't you be happy? Because I did have, and I do have a good marriage and I did have this life in Hawaii. I mean, how many people would love to live in Hawaii, but my life felt like it had this black cloud over it. And so much of that came from when I was a teenager and just these patterns that I was repeating in my life of feeling like I was broken and I was alone. And so, you know, I think we all do things in our life where we're trying to fill a hole and we're trying to like make ourselves feel worthy or worthwhile. And uh, and we started having kids after we'd been married for eight years. We didn't have any kids in the beginning. And I do love babies and I love kids. But as I look back, I'm like, oh, I was trying to feel like I was worthy and got, I wouldn't give any of my six kids back. But when I look back, I realize like, I had kind of this extreme performance gene, like extreme performance and fitness, extreme performance and having kids. Even when I started out as an entrepreneur, extreme performance, like I've got to kill it because I didn't really feel worthy and I had so much anxiety. And so, you know, back eight years ago, living in Hawaii, had five kids at the time, no entrepreneurial experience. I had worked for years as an ICU nurse. I'd been in the fitness field, but pretty much I was alone. I was married, but my partner, my husband was gone about 90 hours a week. No, I'd like not even exaggerating that. And so I had and five- He was an ER physician. Yeah, working at three hospitals, the chief of one of the hospitals on a small rural island. So basically gone, you know, all the time. And then just to keep his sanity, he would surf as well. And so it was like really from sunup to sundown for me was raising kids and- I felt very alone. I felt very numb. I felt very much like I wasn't, you know, I love my kids and my family, but I felt very much like there was something else for me. There was something else that I was supposed to create. And I, at the same time, also didn't feel worthy or able or capable because I had a lot of things that were going against me. And I know that a lot of people listening can relate to that. Like you have a lot of challenges. You have a lot of things going against you. For me, I didn't have family support. I didn't have a nanny. I didn't have, I still don't have a nanny. I didn't have a house cleaner. I still don't have a house cleaner. Like I have all these humans. I didn't have any help. We lived in the middle of nowhere on an island. I didn't have a huge friend network. I just had my head down trying to survive every day. I had a spouse, but he wasn't ever home. And so I didn't have that support. And I had five kids, nine and under. And I homeschooled those kids because we'd had so many problems with the school system in Hawaii. And so when I started as an entrepreneur, I just thought, you know what? Like, I have no idea if I'm going to be able to do this. I don't have the support, but there was something inside of me that was like, you have to do this. Like, you have got to change your circumstance and your situation and I think it was just that thing waking up inside of me that we all have that's like, you've got to do something different now, because if you don't do something different now, in a few years, you're really going to regret it. And so that was eight years ago. So much has changed since then. But, you know, that's a little bit of my background is like, I was just a regular person, a mom, a nurse, working in fitness, you know, doing some different things, trying to get by, raise kids, but not with a large network, not with any business experience and not with any support within my life. And on top of that, my history of anxiety and depression. And what I would say as well that goes along with that is I felt very much a victim of my circumstances. My depression and my anxiety in many, many ways had me feeling like a victim stuck in my circumstances but there was that voice inside of me that was like, you got to get up, you got to get off this couch and you got to do something different. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, our brains are not wired for success. Our brains are wired for failure. I mean, or, or wired not for failure, but for survival. And if we don't consciously choose thoughts of 
success, they're going to consciously go to negative thoughts. Yes. And, and so I think that if we don't start to go, I'm going to do something for myself, then we, we will just consciously have that same groundhog day day that we had the day before. And we have like, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of, of, of thoughts a day. I mean, I've heard like 50,000 thoughts a day or whatever it is. Right. But, and, but, you know, I, you know, 90% of them are the same exact thought that we had the day before. Yeah. We, we think that we're thinking conscious thoughts, but we're really not consciously thinking thoughts. Yeah. We're really just autopilot, autopilot, autopilot all the time. Yeah. And, it's a and, so, and you know, so it's, it's such a huge thing to go, you know what, I'm going to like leap out of this and do something different. Well, I remember, yeah, I remember sitting on the couch um, and it was kind of my regular pattern where I I would kind of feel bad for myself because I was so lonely and I didn't have a lot of friends there and I I wasn't super connected and I had all of these kids and I was always alone. And I, I really, as I look back, I'm like, wow, I was really, really good at victim mindset. Like I really was kind of in this self-created prison. Like I had put myself in this prison. And I just remember after, this is after being married 18 years, going through this stuff for 18 years. And I think we all kind of get to the point where we're at the end of our rope. And we're like, I cannot do this for another year. Like I can't do this for another year. So I'm either going to like change my circumstances and create a different circumstance. Like I have got to get off my butt and I've got to do something. I, I was presented with a business opportunity and out of nowhere, I was like this dark horse with no like 150 Facebook friends, no Instagram, no marketing or sales, like knowledge in any way, shape or form. I didn't study business. I, I was not on social media really. But what it was is you said, hey, our brains are not wired for success, but I believe our hearts are. And it was like in my heart, I I had this feeling, this tug, this pull that was like, Brooke, if anything is going to change about your circumstance, it's going to be you. You're going to have to step up and and you're going to have to do something different. (laughs) Here's the thing, though, is for those of you that are like, okay, well, yeah, that's fine. That that sounds like it was pretty easy. It wasn't because my brain was so full of negative thoughts. My brain was so full of like, who do you think you are? You can't do this. You don't have this experience. You're not a sorority queen. You don't know 5 million people. You're not like super well connected. Like, who do you think you are? Right. You know, those kind of voices. And so what I literally became obsessed with is I became obsessed with listening to things that were different voices than what I was creating in my head. And I was the girl that would be out there, like when I was pregnant with my sixth, I'd be out there like, you know, pregnant belly, taking the walk, listening to the YouTube video, listening to the podcast, like just crying, just like getting all that crap out of my head that I told myself since I was literally 14 years old. And so it was this process of if, if you have a lot of bad thoughts happening in your head, you got to replace them with something else. You have to start replacing it. And for me, it was reprogramming my brain through so many incredible podcasts and videos and obsessing over that because there was so much negativity that I had to overcome and Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it just because I wanted to, or just because I had a goal or a dream. It's like, no, I had to engage in listening every single day to audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube videos, because really the voices in my head were so strong. I was not a confident person. I was not somebody that believed in myself. Oh, that is so good. I always say I can never leave my thoughts unsupervised. (laughs) (laughs) So, and when you let your guard down, it comes back in. It comes back in because it goes right back to the ghetto. That's what I say all the time. Yes, it's so true because because it does. It wants to go right back to like 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 I said, you know. If you if you leave your thoughts unsupervised, it does. It goes right back to it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So true. Okay. Yes. So there you are and you, you take this business opportunity and, and it was to, it was to start to sell, um, mm-hmm. these, um, this, uh, t- talk about that. 
Yeah. So I, it was to sell supplements and that was also something so different for me. Like I never, ever would have been a person that said yes to that. I have two degrees in health kinesiology and, and my bachelor's in nursing and I'm married to a physician. And it's like, we have all this education and here I am, I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to rep supplements. And it was, it was, I think that life is kind of funny that way, right? Like you have your plans of what you're going to do and then something comes in that's totally a surprise. And I think that the only reason that I was open is because I think there was a level of desperation. Like there was a level of, uh, I'm open because what we're doing right now with our careers and our traditional life is not working. And I found something that I fell in love with that had really helped me with my health in tremendous ways, especially with my mental health, my, my depression, anxiety, my energy. And so I just kind of had an open heart. Again, I didn't get stuck in my head. If you're in your head, you're dead, Tony Robbins says. And so in my heart, I felt like, you know what, this is really good. What if I could start to put some effort into this? And what if I could turn the tables and I could negotiate a different kind of life where Thomas isn't gone 90 hours and I don't feel so alone. And I'm not just like numbing myself out, like just raising babies. And I can feel like I'm building something and creating something and leading people and leaving an impact. And, and that's what I did. Like within the course of a year, I was already out earning my husband within the course of two years, I doubled his income within the course of three years. I tripled his income and I was able to completely negotiate a different life. Now, was it easy? Did it come like overnight? No, there were so many days where I was doing the grunt work. And I think that's a part of negotiating your best life is you have to be ready to like roll up your sleeves and, and get in there and do, do the dirty work. Like, working sometimes eight, 10, 12 hours a day. And I don't say you should be working 12 hours a day for the rest of your life. But in order to negotiate the kind of life that I wanted, I knew I was going to have to put in the work. And so there were days when I would be cooking dinner, nursing a baby, and on the phone taking a call at the same time. I like vividly remember stirring tomato sauce Babies in a holder, nursing the baby. Of course, I'm home alone because Thomas has gone 90 hours and I'm 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 on a sales call. Like I was the definition of a hustler. And there's there's such a bad juju out there about hustling by, you know, from a lot of people nowadays. And and I totally get it. You can't hustle forever, but I just gotta say, like, there's always gonna be some level of hustle that's associated with negotiating your best life. And so I put in the hustle, I put in the work for three solid years like that. And it, on the other side of obedience to that call, to that nudge that I had to that, like, I just knew I had to run. I knew it didn't make sense for me to run. I had a newborn baby. Then I had another baby. It didn't really make sense on the outside to other people, but that doesn't matter. What matters is what you feel in your heart. And I knew it was a season for me to run. And that on the other side of that obedience would be a life that most people would never get to live. And so if you're feeling a nudge, you're feeling a call, you're feeling like I should be doing something different, or I got to really dig in and, and drive into this in the new year, listen to that. Because on the other side of, of listening to that inspiration is a life that most people will never live. The thing is you have to visualize and know that you are manifesting your vision and know that you can do that. You have to conceive it and believe it and then know that you can do that. But you had that visualization first. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was a, you know, it was a constant, like, what if I could do this? What, what if I could make, Oh, and I want to go to that too. Yeah. We were talking about that before we started on this call, because a lot of people, they go, I can't do it. I can't do that. And the difference between somebody who is successful and somebody who is not is a person who is successful. They just go, but how, how can I do it? They ask how, yes, don't just stop and and go, I can't. Yes. Successful person says, how? Let me just find, figure out a way. Yeah. A successful person um, sees a problem or sees an obstacle obstacle, 
and they execute a solution quickly, right? So it's not that we don't see obstacles or we don't have problems. I could, I could tell you about a million different obstacles. I mean, I could use my kids as obstacles, but to me, that would be like sacrilegious. Like I can't use my kids as an obstacle. I have to use them as a reason. And so successful people take the obstacle or the excuse and they flip it. They flip mm -hmm. it on its head and they're like, this is exactly why I have to do it. So there's two questions I ask myself on a regular basis. If I were to do it, how might I do it? Mm -hmm. So yes, I see the obstacle. Yes, I see. I don't know. Like I wanted to do a couples retreat in Costa Rica like a year and a half ago because I'm also really mm -hmm. passionate about healthy relationships and ambitious people having healthy relationships. And before I even took it to Thomas to talk about it, because there's always when you're in relationship, there's like a little bit of negotiation for things. I had already asked myself, well, if I were to do it, how might I do it? Or when I was building my business with a, a, a newborn and then another newborn, like this is crazy and this is difficult, but if I were to do it, how might I do it? It's that. And then the second question is when I feel like my back is up against a wall, which I think is probably on a daily basis, like you too, like daily basis, weekly basis, what can I do? You are never completely disempowered. Like that's the big lie that so many of us believe. And sometimes I even fall back into that. Like we all have a pity party sometimes and feel like, oh my gosh, why is everything falling apart? But the reality is, is that in any situation, there's always something you can do. And it might just be like that you're eking forward. Like it, it feels like you're going nowhere, but taking any kind of action and I think the other thing that goes along with this, Rebecca, is a lot of times people get analysis paralysis. They're just paralyzed. Oh, yes. oh, yeah, they're, yes. they're so paralyzed about what they need to do or what's the next best thing or how, what's the next thing I should do to, to make this business work or what's the next thing I should do to get through this negotiation. And I always say, listen, make a list of all of the possible things you could do and then just do something. Do yeah anything. Like we're sitting around trying to get the perfect action, the perfect step. And it's like action begets action, begets action, begets action. We can make a list and then it's like pick whichever one will get you into motion. And then you'll start getting yourself into a place where you truly feel empowered. You feel disempowered when you're just sitting and when you're frozen and when life is just happening to you, but you make life happen for you when you say, if I were to do it, how might I do it? Or if it were to happen, how might it happen? How could I make it happen? Or what can I do? In this situation right now, there's always going to be something I can do. What can I do? Mm -hmm. Right? And you haven't been immune to having to deal with narcissists in your life either, have you? No. I. And you know what? It, for me, I was thinking about this before our podcast for me, I think a lot of it stems back to, um, and I think you would agree with this, that there are a lot of successful people, um, myself included, that deep down don't really have the self-worth and the confidence. It's like we're very, very accomplished and, and we've been able to perform and produce specific results. And when I look back on my situation, I think a lot of it went back to not really being grounded in my own worth oh, yeah. and having the confidence. And so I put myself in a situation where I could very easily be manipulated and used. And because I wanted to be loved and I wanted to be good and I wanted to be worthy, I put myself in a situation that for me became very toxic and unhealthy and came with physical symptoms and emotional symptoms and all of those things that I had to untangle over the process mm -hmm. of a few years. Mm -hmm. I just recently had a conversation with my therapist about this, actually. And, um, you know, she was talking about leaky boundaries and um, how high performance people like us end up in these narcissistic relationships because of leaky boundaries. And what happens is where we end up being basically good, good targets for narcissists, because what happens is um, we end up going, well, I'll do it for you. I'll handle it. 
you'll see, and you'll see how great I am yes. because I'll show you how great I am by handling it for you. And I'll, you know, oh, you can't hand, you can't do that. Um, I'll show you how worthy I am by handling it all for you and yes. I'll do it all for you. And I'll even show you how great I can be and how worthy I am and how wonderful I am and I'll yeah. work even harder. And, 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 and then we end up like killing ourselves. Exactly. And, um, and then we end up with these, you know, we, we know that the person isn't pulling their weight Right. And, but we don't make them pull their weight because, yeah. you know, we ended up doing it for them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I ended up having that same situation yeah. again recently in my company, <laughs> you know, when I shouldn't have. And, um, but, you know, I've learned my lesson. Yeah. I, so, you know, I think. Yeah, we end up we, what we you know where we should as soon as the thing happens. Yeah, we need to say, you know, this is what you agreed to do. Yeah. No, you know, and then just close that boundary. Yeah, and be okay with that. And I think what happens for those of us that get caught in that sort of situation is again, like you were describing, it's like, we want to feel worthy and we want to feel like a good girl or a good guy. And I'd already had a, a separation in this business relationship years prior, but I think in my heart, wanting to be a compassionate person, because I am very empathetic and compassionate as well, is I wanted to give this person another opportunity and so I opened the door to my influence and opened the door to my playbooks of how to do all the things. And I also ended up being the girl that stayed up late to finish the work and finish the, the documents and, and get everything prepared. And after a while, I just realized like that it was sucking the life out of me. And I was getting like psoriasis patches around my eyes. And I was like, what is it that's going on here? And I think for anybody listening, like, I just want you to know that you're not crazy. I want you to know that it's not, you know, we do create our circumstances in that we allow people into our lives. And I'm not saying that you deserve the treatment you got. I'm not saying that you deserve, you know, to be abused or to be in a narcissistic relationship. When I say you create your circumstances, what I mean is that you create your circumstances through the way in which you relate to yourself. So if you relate to yourself in such a way that you think, I don't want to be a bad friend, or I'm a bad friend, or I'm unworthy, or I'm unlovable, or I'm not valuable. If these are stories you've been telling yourself that are stored in your amygdala from the time you're four, five, six, seven, you've carried that into adulthood. And the circumstance that you're in right now has been created through the way in which you relate to yourself. So how do we change this? We change the way in which we relate to ourselves. And the way that I was able to start getting out of this relationship and untangling it a few years ago was through doing the healing work of how I related to myself and realizing and understanding, wow, I kind of created this circumstance. And once you realize that you, through the way that you related to yourself and think about yourself or believe about yourself, you let these people into your life, you start to heal that part of you. Guess what happens? Like there's, there's not really room for these kind of people in your life anymore. And, and like you said, Rebecca, you had something recently, you know what, sometimes these things will pop up because those pieces of you that developed when you were young in your amygdala memory, right? The way the stories you told yourself, the emotional memory bank, that's always going to be with you. It's always going to be with yeah, you. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it, it's such a good point that you're making here because, you know, for example, you know, if somebody is working with you and they're telling you a sob story about, you know, something that's going on in your family or whatever, but they're not doing their job. And so, you know, what happens, what would happen with me is like, I, I would start to feel bad. Like, I don't, I, you know, that sort of thing. Yes. Whereas 
you know, and then I would start to think, oh, you know, people are going to think that I'm a bad person if I, you know, whatever. And then, but, you know, then it's like, it all starts to collapse into that I'm a bad person, this, that, or the other thing, right? Whereas, but you have to separate that out, right? You know that you are a good person. Yes. You are a good person. That person is not performing in their job. Yes. You can let them go because they're not performing in their job. That does not make you a bad person. Yes. You know, you are still a good person. You can still let them go because they're not performing in their job. You know, and those two things can still remain the same, you know, still be on the same planet. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's really what you have to get okay with. And, 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 and that's, you know, what you can't collapse together right. and, 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 and have leaky boundaries about, right. But that's yes. where narcissists prey on you. They prey yes. on people who have leaky boundaries that way, like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, and it, compassionate it, people and empathetic correct. people and hard correct. workers, like, the person that in the group does all the group work. Yeah, they totally. So they'll get you to do all the work and whatever, because they think they, you know, you're, they know that you're afraid of looking like a bad person. So they get you to do all the work and blah, 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 blah. Right. Totally. Totally. And so I started to really do the work on, on healing the way that I related to myself and realizing I'm not a bad person. Like I do intrinsically have worth. I don't have to perform for my worth. Actually, I've created a lot of success. Like exactly, I did so now. Need... That person would be gone. You yeah, and, and listening and and listening to myself. I mean, that's the second thing. Is like stop talking yourself out of the inner voice that knows what's really going on. Because I know I'm a good person, so you're out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> I'm actually going to listen to my inner knowing that's saying like something is off here. And this, this has to end. And part of that goes along with like being the most authentic version of yourself, right? Exactly. So many of us are contorting ourselves into like all different kinds of shapes and like back bends and leg behind the head, just contorting ourselves and living in such an inauthentic way, dampening our inner voice and not listening to ourselves. And so I just came home to authentically like who I am, my worth, what I can create, and that I, I don't want to be used, right? Exactly. And that's exactly what it comes down to. You're being used. And so one of the most incredible things that you have created and that I'm so excited to be a part of that you have manifested into the most amazing, amazing, amazing events on the planet is Align. And I want you to tell everybody about Align. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Align, uh, again, like many things in our lives, uh, Align was created from a place of pain, right? Anything great that Rebecca, for example, what you've created came from going through a really painful experience. Align for me came from an experience about five years ago where I really was out of alignment. I'd been building a business for three years. I was cranking through. I was killing it. I was doing amazing but I was also completely numb inside because I was in that period of time where I was hustling for my worth. I was, I was looking for external approval and validation and I, I just never felt good enough. And so I was doing a lot of things like contorting, like I was talking about, maybe working with people that I shouldn't have been working with, having leaky boundaries, and I just felt nothing. And I remember it was June 14th, uh, five years ago, my husband's birthday, where I was completely numb, completely disconnected from him, from the kids, whatever. I had a baby at the time that was about eight or nine months old, and it was his birthday. He came to me and he said, hey, I want to go to the beach for my birthday. Just go to the beach as a family. And I was on my phone, like typing away, disconnected, doing my own thing, totally didn't even hear it. And he says, you know what? I'll take the effing kids and you can have your business. That is not Thomas at all. Like if you know Thomas and he actually said the F word, which I don't really say, but (laughs) he doesn't say it either. But it was like he had had it. I was so disconnected and out of alignment because of my lack of worthiness and listening to myself and my leaky boundaries. And the thing that really 
uh, stood out to me is he actually did take the kids and he took them to the beach. I stayed home with the baby. But the thing that really stood out to me is I felt nothing. I was completely numb and that actually scared me. And I know that some people listening have been through some hard things, have been maybe like low in their self-worth, have been in bad relationships, like things are happening and you are feeling nothing. You're kind of numb. And it scared me enough that I decided some things needed to change. And I want, went to work, got myself a coach, like did a ton of personal development, a ton of healing work, a ton of getting to know and understand myself and grow you know, in my alignment with myself. And what I discovered is that when you're in alignment in your life, life is easeful. It's not easy. It's easeful. Mm -hmm. That means it flows better. Like whether you're on a success journey or you want a happy relationship or you want a healthy relationship with your body, when you're in alignment with your core values and what matters most to you, and you are, are living and operating in that way in alignment your life is more easeful and it's not so hard and you don't have to disconnect or tap out or numb or be addicted to other things. Like I was addicted to work, right? And so through my own journey of figuring out what alignment was, physical, emotional, spiritual, relationship, and financial, even working on your relationship with money, I created Align because I found so many other people that were struggling. They had big dreams. They had big goals. They wanted to change. Even they just wanted the power to change their life, their circumstances. They didn't want to be unhappy anymore. They didn't want to be going from bad relationship to bad relationship or jumping from business to business to business. Like they just wanted the power to change their life. And so I created this space, this event to help people once a year in January, come back into alignment, to realign their lives, to help them to transform whatever it is that's kind of gotten off kilter in their life so that they could move into the new year with new energy, new joy, new purpose, new impact. And it's the perfect time of year to make that recommitment. So what I would say is it's really a, a transformational event, whether you have a business or not, you will come to this event. It's all different kinds of people, all different kinds of businesses. Some don't even have businesses uh, from teenagers to people in their 70s. I have mother-daughter combos coming, coming. I have couples coming. But it's meant to help you to transform the way that you think, the way that you believe, so that you can show up in your calling, in your life, the way that you want to. You can shine brighter. You can create a better life. And you can truly negotiate the life that you want in 2024. Uh, I love it. And I'm so excited for it. And if you are listening to this, you need to come. It is going to be the event and especially the event to kick off your year and to get started. The speakers there are amazing. Just give us um, a rundown of who some of the speakers are this year. Yeah, it's it's pretty insane. Every, every year I go through, I'm like, how am I going to fit all these amazing people? But I do. Um, so this is an exercise in manifesting as well. The speakers that I have on my stage is just, you know, I have always thought like, how can I do it? What would it look like? From having you there to having Jamie Kern Lima, Trent Shelton, Rachel Luna, uh, Moira Kusaba, Melissa Wiggins, uh, Rudy Ricksteins, like uh, seriously, like Alejandro Crisafuli. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I'm going to leave somebody out. <laughs> Coop Blackson, um, just this incredible room. People that have transformed my life and people that oftentimes you might have a lot of listeners here that don't know who a lot of those names are, but I will tell you every single year, the compliment I get from people that come is the feeling and the experience that's created in that room and the intentionality that went into selecting the speakers for a specific purpose. The theme this year is breakthrough because I feel like over the last three or four years, so many of us have been in a holding pattern and we've been kind of waiting for circumstances to change or times to change or somebody to come into our life to kind of rescue us or help us. And I want to help you. And everybody that's speaking there wants to help you to have a breakthrough experience so that 2024 is not a repeat of 2023. So it's an amazing room. It really, really is. It's unbelievable. And you really need to get there, come spend the weekend with us. It will transform 
your year. And I know there uh, there aren't even all that many tickets left. So you need to come. You need to come spend the weekend with us. I want to see you there. I want to meet you. I'm co- I'm spending the whole weekend there. And I don't really do that. So I, you know, normally when I go to speak, I just come in and out. But I'm I'm committing to spend the whole weekend there. So come spend the weekend with us. I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to see you. And thank you, Brooke, for putting this together and and curating these unbelievable speakers and these unbelievable events. It's and it's so high, highly curated. I mean, the everything that you uh, have, have the the way you put it together is just so special. I mean, every workbook has is is just so special, so yes. special. Yes, I put a lot of heart and soul into it, and I think. A big reason that I want everyone here to hear is that, you know, for for many people that are listening to this podcast, I suspect that you've had a lot of the feelings of unworthiness or not feeling like you're special or not feeling like you're really that important throughout your life. In fact, I think it's a common feeling that we have as humans. And so when I create a space from the workbook to the stage, to photo ops, to your registration or whatever, I want you to feel like this space was created and curated intentionally for you to walk into it and to feel like I am special. I am important because so many of us get into situations in our lives and our businesses where we don't feel that way. We get into these bad situations and I want you to feel elevated in this space. And I feel like between that experience and the speakers and everything you'll learn, you'll feel elevated. So if it speaks to you, it's in San Antonio, uh, January 18th, 19th and 20th on the Riverwalk. And the website is alignevenslive.com. And I'm so honored that you're there the whole time, Rebecca. That means a lot to me because I know with busy schedules and how much you speak and everything for you to decide to come and be in this space that I've created, it means the world to me. And I, I know you'll love it as well. Yes. And I'm going to be speaking on Speak Strong, how to have your power in difficult conversations. That's my topic. So you're actually going to be hearing from me on a workshop and I'm actually going to be on a panel, I think, as well. And I think I'm going to be participating in a couple of different things. Um, I think you have me on. So um, but, you know, mostly I'm going to be really teaching you how to, um, you know, shift the conversation in, in difficult conversations. I'm going to be uh, having you walk away with actual scripts actual, um, you know, a a whole workbook of things, Um, you know, really, really, we're going to dialogue, we're going to role play, you're going to really have some good stuff from me, so that you can um, feel like when you get into those difficult situations, those difficult conversations, whether it's a, a professional situation, a personal conversation, that you really feel like you've got something that you can actually use to um to to um you know shift the conversation and um and feel like you can feel powerful in um difficult situations. So that's what you're going to be getting from me. And then I know from everyone else you're going to be getting some really, really juicy stuff as well. So um it's definitely going to be worth your while. Uh, I know that every single detail is um is so special for you and the connections that you make. I mean, I know for me, I I definitely always felt like I was different growing up as well. Yes. And I know that, that that's something that's so important for Brooke is making real, true, authentic connections because we didn't have that as kids growing up. And so now as adults, Having real, true, authentic friendships is something that's really, really important to us. And so we want you to have a space where you can actually have that as yeah. as adults. So a hundred percent. Connection is everything. Community is everything. And and the great lie that we believe is that we are alone. Sometimes we just have to find the right room. We have to find the right people. And I would just say, don't give up on that. Like if you've been in relationships where you've been hurt, 
the worst thing you can do is cut off connection and stop trying, keep trying, keep looking for those healthy relationships. And I, I'm so excited to myself as well to continue to learn from you on communication and having difficult conversations. And I love being able to have those tactical, like practical things that people can walk away. Like it's not just a fluff fest and a motivator. It's like meat and potatoes, like that you're going to walk out of there with. So I'm just so grateful. And I've just loved having this conversation today. Yes, thank you. And so give us that website one more time that people can sign up with. Yep, it's aligneventslive.com, aligneventslive.com. And you can use code Rebecca100 to save $100. There you go. You heard it here. All right. Thank you, Brooke. And I, and where can they follow you on Instagram too? Where can they um, find you? Yeah, you can follow me on my personal page at Hemingway Half Dozen for those half dozen kids I have. Um, and also uh, business pages at Align the Good Life because I believe that we all deserve to live our own very good life. And we do that through living in alignment. All right. Make sure you go follow her, check her out and subscribe to her. And she's just literally the best. I just absolutely adore you. Thank you so much. I adore you too. Thank you.